had every intention on being an aerospace engineer. Used to repent for watching Star Trek too much, but I couldn't get God to tell me to do anything else. And I loved the sciences, and turned out God was putting already in my heart what He'd later put in my hand, and I just decided to pursue an engineering career. I transferred to the University of Minnesota as a junior, where I'd spend seven more years. I remember finding a little Chi Alpha group that the Assemblies of God, a campus ministry, the Assemblies of God had started a few years earlier. The campus pastor at that time, K.K. John, he, uh, he was just, just phasing out into other areas of ministry. I remember him talking to me and sort of by default, I became the leader of this little Chi Alpha group of about 12 people by the end of my junior year. One year later, by the end of my senior year, I shrunk that group successfully from 12 down to three, me and two others. It was the only time in my life I was number one in the nation at something. I was the number one campus ministry shrinker in the Assemblies of God. Obviously my call into engineering was fully confirmed. And I'll never forget, I remember it like it was yesterday, a guy was standing in my dorm room and he looked me in the eyes, one of the other two guys that came to our almost extinct Chi Alpha ministry. And he looked at me and said, maybe we should pray and fast. Such simple words, such obvious words. But yet to this day, I find that I struggle with the words to describe what happened to me in this next few moments. It was like God, as soon as those words came out of his mouth, it was like God began to squeeze my heart. I was uh, halfway through the last semester. My senior year, I was carrying a full load. But it became so intense and so distracting that there are times between classes I just feel driven to pray. It was like I walked in the conscious presence of God. The holiness of God just wrapped around me and God just began to squeeze my heart. There's a little old abandoned Chi Alpha office that we had for just a few more months. It was on, just on the edge of campus. All it had was a desk and a carpet. No chair, nothing else. I would lie on my face on that carpet wondering what was going on inside of me as God squeezed my heart. And I remember it wasn't fancy praying. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, eloquent praying. It was very messy praying. In fact, you know, Paul says sometimes the Spirit prays through us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I remember our forefathers talking about how in the, in the breakthrough moments of our movement, intercessors, prayer people would travail in the Holy Spirit. And I think God brought me to the outskirts of that experience because sometimes for two hours all I could do was lie on the ground with my face in the carpet and just groan. I didn't even hardly know how to pray. I just groan inside as the Spirit of God just ruined me inside and squeezed my heart. I remember I became so hungry for God that it would take my appetite away for days. There was one time in my life I could fast without I even be, I didn't even want to eat. It's not because I was living on dorm food, which I was, but it was, it was just this agonizing hunger for God that began to trump every other hunger in my life. And I'm not saying this like I'm something special. I mean, I was just, I was just a rocket science. I was just about to graduate. I had no intention of going into full-time ministry. And I wasn't normally like this. But God just ruined me on the inside and brought me face to face with His presence. See, I deeply, I deeply believe that God brought me to the end of myself to set the pattern early in my life. And it was in my second year, and you know, I wish God always did things immediately. Have you ever had that feeling? I told God once, he's always two years behind my timetable. I remember nothing happened for the next year and a half. And all of a sudden, I was going to a normal Chi Alpha group. We had actually, you know, grown to about 12 people again. I used to think, boy, if we ever hit 15, it'd be like revival hit this place. And I walked to the building. I brought a picture of that building. I keep this picture in my phone because it reminds me that God acts by His power apart from us in sovereign, real places and real moments. It was a Tuesday morning, Tuesday night. Our little Chi Alpha group, I thought of 12 people, met just in the windows of facing the front street here on the second floor in that room. And I walked into that Chi Alpha meeting that night and there were 65 students there. They didn't all come from another campus ministry that decided to disband that week and come and visit us. 
They came in clusters of friends, but they came from all kinds of directions. I had people that night asking me, where have you been? And I said, our posters have been up for years in this campus. And they said, we didn't see. We didn't see them till this week. It's like God, independently with a whole group of people, opened their eyes. Instead of, when I walked in that building that night, I was expecting 12 people. And if my faith was huge, maybe 15 and 65 showed up. Instead of sitting in a circle singing songs at each other, the power of God fell. We began to worship God. This was October. Once again, all our new student outreach had failed. And God just did something that only He can do. See, I firmly believe that God wants us to go deep before we go wide. Great men and women of God throughout history have always believed that if you will take care of the depth of your heart and the depth of your life, God will take care of the breadth of your influence. 